Arab Spring brought a great wave of optimism to the Middle East and North Africa. But the aftermath has been a disappointment. It's been violent and disappointing. Um, how would you assess the prospects for this, this troubled region? Was the Arab Spring just a passing flash, or did something important happen there that's going to alter the future? Thank you very much. I should be the last person to complain about how the Arab Spring is mm -hmm. taking long. I come from Iran, and we're in the 34th year of our transition. <laughs> so <Yep. laughs> modesty right. is much Fair enough. Uh, required here. Now, the prospects for the Arab Spring countries is not very bright in the next mm -hmm. few years. First and foremost, flash estimates. Except for Libya, growth next year will be about 3%. Mm -hmm. under some optimistic scenarios. Inflation about 7% and little change, both little change from 2013. These countries now they face the following situation. Think of a set of countries that have been hit by the shock of the global recession, financial problems in their relations with the global financial markets, high food and energy prices, institutions that have broken down or needed to be changed, a social contract that didn't, wasn't working anymore, a social contract whereby governments pro offered employment and subsidies to people in return for limits on the rights of citizenship. So. All of these have broken down. And one consequence of the breakdown of the institutions and political alignments is that there is little yet of a vision as to how these countries should move forward. Second, there isn't yet a way of distributing the burdens of adjustment. Even in countries like the US where you have pretty well honed institutions for dealing with adjustment, for example, for fiscal adjustment. It doesn't happen easily. Imagine now in a situation where they've gone through massive political realignments. The Middle East has the highest level of unemployment in the world as a region, especially our youth unemployment. They've also got, and this is a huge burden going ahead, right now and going ahead, subsidies. Energy subsidies in 2011 were $240 billion in the Middle East, or 8.5% of GDP. Now, when the Arab Spring hit, these countries did some f adjustment, but also dug into their buffers, drew down international reserves, picked up debt, high fiscal deficits, raised subsidies, financial flows from the rest of the world came down significantly, so governments have had to rely more and more on domestic financing. And all of these, together with uncertainty, political uncertainty, has pushed the private sector in these countries to the sidelines. Looking ahead, there's also a huge risk in the name of Syria and its economic implications sitting ahead. Mm -hmm. Just to give you one number that may indicate the level of spillovers, 25% of the population of Lebanon is now Syrian. Hmm. Okay, imagine such a dramatic shift in the population of the US, even vis-a-vis -vis some relatively similar population from Canada. The burden on the infrastructure, education, health, etc. In the short term, these countries have not yet been able to deal with the massive mac short-term macro stabilization problems, in part because they are still going through the first phase of drawing up constitutions 
and setting up some rules of the game and needless to say they're going back and forth. They have faced massive shortfalls in financing. The international community in the past, since 2011 to mid-2013, has provided about $38 billion of assistance, more than half of it coming from the Gulf Cooperation Council countries. To put it in some perspective, compare it to the amount that was spent by the U.S. alone on the Marshall Aid Plan. Between 1951 and 1953, there were about 18, 19 billion, 17, 18 billion dollars spent by the U.S. alone, which in current dollars is roughly 150 billion. So it is remote. The level of organized assistance hasn't been there as there was after the Marshall, uh, World War II with the Marshall Plan and with the transitions after the fall of the Soviet Union. And unlike those two episodes, countries and populations have had very different views about where they want to move toward. There was some general understanding after World War II in Europe where these countries wanted to return to. Post-Soviet era, there was right or wrong some vision where they wanted to move to, and there were people next door in Europe especially willing to help. These conditions aren't there. 